Welcome to Pop Turnative, where we dive into topical discussions from the worlds of pop culture, social media, and sports. Here is your host, Peter Romoliotis, aka PD Beats. PD Beats here from Pop Turnative, speaking to Gabriella Pizzolo about season four, volume one of Stranger Things on Netflix. She, of course, plays Susie. Welcome to the show. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much for having me, PD. I'm so excited to chat with you. I mean, Susie shows up last season and, you know, becomes a meme instantly, right? With a lot of things. Yeah. And there was some uncertainty whether she was going to show up for season four. We've been waiting a long time and we had a lot of these questions. So what was that kind of like when you officially found out that you would be returning for the following season? It was definitely wild, PD. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I didn't have any idea that I was going to be coming back either. Yeah. And all of the memes were so funny and I <laughs> was seeing them because obviously as a teenager, you know, at the time I was still 16 and I was, I was cackling at all of them, you know, but I thought, you know, there's no way that I'm going to be coming back because when I first had auditioned, it was for a one-time role and so I immediately was like, this is like the best thing that could have happened. And it's amazing that it happened one time. And then they ended up having me come back. And maybe that was their idea all along. And they just wanted an element of surprise. Um, yeah. Because I think that's very common. We're just as shocked as everyone else seeing it that I came back. Well, so what was the turnaround from like you finding out that you were coming back and then filming the scenes? Like what was the like the gap in between? It's really funny because I found out that I was coming back in March of 2020. Okay. And that is when the pandemic started. And so I ended up yes. having to wait an entire year to even film any of my things. Oh my goodness. Any of my scenes. Um, any little bits that I had happened a year later. And uh, so I just sat there for an entire year waiting to hear what I was going to have to do. And, you know, everybody was theorizing what I was supposed to yes. be and, and why I was in the show at all. And like, if there was a secret alternative motive besides being Dustin's girlfriend. <laughs> and it, <laughs> it was so funny because I would sit and I would chat with Gaten, who plays Dustin. He was like, yeah, I mean, we really don't even know. Like, you could be anything. <laughs> and then we found out a year later that I was just a kid living in Utah and there was no secret alternative motive. I was just a regular kid just trying to live her daily life. Oh my goodness. And like, you know, the stuff in season three, that was some good stuff. Don't get me wrong. We're introduced to you, like the never ending story thing that I think that song will never like you that will always be around that song like and that whole meme and that whole sing along but the stuff with Susie in season 4 that's like some good stuff like there's some unbelievable scenes like they elevated yes. the storylines with Susie in season 4 i just want to say that <laughs> i have to hand it to them because honestly when i was reading it i was seeing all of my siblings and <laughs> they were all incredible but they were hired straight from the local area that we were shooting in and I had never met any of them. And they all just immediately started going into this comedic bit. And I was like, Oh my gosh, these people are amazingly talented and they all just go to school and, and they're even like five and they're being incredible actors. Absolutely. Um, <laughs> yeah. And, and definitely all the stuff with the hacking totally raised the bar for Susie and everyone else. Yeah, when we go to Susie's house, that whole scene, I've I've rewatched that scene like many, many times because that's just chaos. Like the whole yeah. it's just chaos and it's the it's the greatest thing ever. Like it's so good. So what can you tell me more about that day? Because that was a question I actually had. Like, what was that day like in terms of getting everything ready, the scenes that in in like Susie's bedroom and then going to the computer? What was that whole day like? Was that one day or was that a couple of days? That was like about a week. Oh, that was wow. Okay. Maybe five shooting days. Okay. Four or five. <laughs> um, and uh, yeah, so I started out on my birthday, my 18th birthday, 
and it, we shot the entire day and then they had a party for me afterwards and it was a secret surprise party. That's amazing. Um, <laughs> yeah. And I didn't even know that it was going to be happening because I had just been coming back. I didn't know if they remembered what my birthday even was or who I was really, because I was, I was suddenly doing scenes with people I never thought I would be doing scenes with like Finn and Charlie and Noah and Eduardo who plays Argyle. I didn't even know would exist in season three. Um, and so then all the rest of the days were super fun because we had bonded the first day through the party um, and, and we played outdoor games together and they made it so fun and so special. And they definitely remembered. That's so awesome. And I want to ask you, um, you also have a, like a musical theater background as well, right? Yeah, I do. And it's funny because, you know, I used to be stage crew for my high school musicals and everything. So I would be kind of doing the follow spot or helping out with the sets and everything. Definitely. Is there not kind of a, a rush in the air as soon as you wake up in the morning before the night of a performance where you're just like, it's like the greatest feeling ever. Like there's this energy in the air, right? No, absolutely. I mean, call it adrenaline or, or something else. Something but even not even when you get to like the, the theater, like the like you wake up, you start your day, you're like, I'm performing tonight. Like there's a feeling yes. that you can't get over. Especially opening nights. I'm sure you know. Yes. Like, first night you ever try and do a show in front of people, it's terrifying and amazing all at the same time. And it's kind of like that when I was showing up to shoot for Stranger Things, just because I had so little days and so little time every day was so exciting and filled with <laughs> tons of stuff from like 8 a.m to 8 p.m you know super super fun long you know hard work days absolutely no it's so crazy and you know i did a radio spot when uh like uh the week before like volume one came out for season four and i made a bold claim that People were like, actually, you know, like, it's not as bold. I made a claim that I think Stranger Things is the greatest TV show ever created. Wow. That but is, it, but it's there not. There are a lot of TV shows, but Stranger Things is definitely up there for me, too. I think you can make an argument it's the greatest show ever created. I think it has everything. I think a TV show that can take songs from the 70s and the 80s and make them chart topping songs after like two days is yes. something. We saw that with a never ending story theme with Susie and Dusty in, in season three. Now we have, you know, Kate Bush's songs and everything. Uh -huh. Like, think about it. Like what show has that power? You know what I mean? No, I know. It's, it's wild how media is so affected, especially for, you know, teenagers and adults and grandparents, you know, it, it pulls in so many different generations and has so many different aspects of comedy and horror, especially this season, yeah. all of the elements weave together to make something so special. And I feel like there's total opportunity for anything and everything to happen. And it does. Yeah. And I think that that is part of why the show is so incredible. Oh, absolutely. Now it's two seasons of playing Susie. What is your favorite thing about this character? Are you able to kind of distinguish what your favorite thing about Susie is specifically? Yeah, I love comedy acting and especially the comedy acting that I get to do with her, mainly because she is super serious in her own mind. But yeah. when you're hearing her stories and you're seeing her family, they're just so funny and <laughs> odd and not what you would expect at all that I think that, you know, kind of the most outrageous part about getting to play her is also the most fun part about playing her. It, it, that, it, there's a lot of comedy as well. She's also one of those characters, though, that she's... She's just like, she loves Dusty. She loves computers and doing a lot of things. And sometimes she's not trying to be funny with her lines, but we think it's funny. You know what I mean? Yes, exactly. <laughs> and I love taking myself so seriously only to watch it and be like, that was hilarious. Why was that supposed to be serious? <laughs> I don't even know. But I think it kind of adds to kind of the comedy for me watching. And I hope it adds to the comedy for people watching too. It's so crazy, you know, also the show just like kind of drops and then immediately like globally so many countries all around the world just kind of fall in love with the characters and, you know, there's so many, there's so much love and fan art 
um, from like for Suzy all over the world. Like it's not even just like a couple countries here and there. Like it's global. When did that start kind of sinking in? How global it was? Was it after season three, or is it more evident now with what's happening for season four? I think it's definitely more evident now for season four. I think season three was super fun. Well, season three it, started was just like that one scene, right? Technically, yes. yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah it was. It was like it was more. You did you impact? It was a big impact. Think about it. It's one scene, and like people were like all over it, right? <laughs> yeah, I think the song definitely helped with that. The element of like surprise, where the song came out of nowhere. And the element and of surprise like, that what Susie are they doing? also the element of like that Susie was. They were toying with the fact that old oh, like Dustin has a girlfriend. Like we haven't seen her at all, right? <laughs> Yeah, and he's and he's just making it up, or it's a figment of his imagination. Yeah, yeah, but yeah, more and this I, season, right? There's more scenes and everything. Yes. Yeah. Yes, in this season, there's so much more. I think for everybody, we get to see them mature and, and become more adult-like people. Yep. And that adds to just the entire absurdity of the story and the mystery and what's going on in Hawkins, but also what's going on in Russia and California. And yeah. then they go to Utah and, and Nevada, spoilers. Um, there's just a lot of places and it is so global that I think it helps with the global phenomena of the show. Yeah, no, absolutely. Is it crazy to think though, if you just put like Susie on like YouTube or like on Google search that like, the Stranger Things option after Susie like comes up right away. Like it's that it's pretty yeah. wild, right? It's a, it's a pretty common name. <laughs> yes, yes. I think it's just a testament to how like like you said, it's such a huge show. It's the greatest it's show of all time. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> you know, and I think that because of that, everything from the show ends up being so much larger than any of the cast could ever imagine, and it's kind of special to make something like that. Now knowing, you know, I started in season three once the show was already really big. So I yeah. kind of had an idea like this song is probably going to be played a lot. So, you know, I better sing it well, but also, you know, it just that it's 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 wild to think that something you're doing months before is going to be popular months later. And, uh, you know, I think that just the entire, you know, Kate Bush, everything from 86 yeah. Everything coming into play with rock and roll and and D and D being resurfaced as something maybe darker, I think has definitely played into the dark elements of the season and you know kind of the darker elements of the characters like Susie that used to be kind of childlike and and funny. Yeah, are starting to like you're starting to see some sides that that might be a little more adult. No, absolutely. Every season they make it more. It's funny because I've seen a lot of the cast do interviews about this, Gabriella. Like, it just naturally gets darker at times. You know what I mean? Like, and scarier. Like, I don't think that's like a plan. I think it's just that st the storytelling of it, right? It just naturally just goes that direction. Like, yeah. some of the Vecna stuff is like pretty intense, like, and scary. <laughs> like, yes. <laughs> yes. And I think that the young cast is getting older, which is why they're able to kind of make it like that. Yep. And and also the audience is getting older because the kids who grew up when they were 11 and 12 watching the show are now, you know, adults. Mm -hmm. um, and so I think that a lot of it is also the maturation of the show is, you know, matching the maturation of the audience. A hundred percent. Now I do have to ask this before we wrap up too. So Susie has like glasses and everything, and obviously like your hair is a little different than it is now, right? But have you gotten yeah. recognized at all as Susie? I have, especially okay. when I'm at at places that have you know links to Stranger Things, like at the premieres. And yeah, stuff, yeah, absolutely. And yeah. <laughs> um, also, they say my name at those, but on the street, yeah, sometimes I Does think someone that just I, you don't be the funniest thing would just be like if you're walking around and someone just starts like you just hear from far like turn. Around. <laughs> uh, that has happened has? to me before. <laughs> People, I just the other day I was standing in uh I don't know, it was like a <laughs> coffee shop and somebody started singing it, and I was like, huh, how do they know the song? And then they were looking right at me, and I was like, okay, I see what this is. <laughs> but that's so that's awesome though, right? Like there's not much yes. more to say. That's amazing. 
I love that. That type of introduction to meeting a new person too, that's the best. <laughs> that's the best for me. It is so great. Gabriela, thank you so much for coming on Pop Turner. It was so great chatting with you. Thank you so much for having me. So season four, volume one is available now worldwide on Netflix. So you know what? There's a very good chance that everyone watching this interview has at least watched that those couple of episodes, you know, five or six times already. So you know what they could do? They could just watch it again for another six, watch seven times. Watch it again, why not? Watch it again. Wait for volume two that's going to come out in July, which is going to be amazing. There's an Instagram account, right, that people can follow follow get you at, basically? Yes, Gabriella Pizzolo. It's just your name. name. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yep. Awesome. Well, this has been Pop Turner. You do .com slash Pop Turner for previous episodes. Till next time, this is Gabriella Pizzolo, who plays Susie in Stranger Things. And Pity Beats signing off. Thank you for tuning in to Pop Turnative. Make sure to check out our past episodes of Pop Turnative on YouTube. Be sure to like Pop Turnative on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. This has been an Autograph Communications production.